Hello and welcome into this week's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from RNN. On today's Cup Rewind, we are looking back at the longest race of the season, the 2019 Coca-Cola 600. 400 laps, 600 miles around the 1.5 mile Charlotte Motor Speedway, Concord, North Carolina. Lots of caution flags in this race. 16 total for 80 laps. First one came at lap 24 for the 20 of Eric Jones, wrecking in turn 4. Lap 49, the 95 of Matt DiBenedetto cut a tire and got in the wall in turn 2. Lap 75, Martin Truex Jr. got in the wall as well in turn 4, also a tire issue. Lap 87, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse and the 18 of Kyle Busch got together on the front stretch. Lap 93, the 8 of Daniel Hemrick and Clint Boyer wrecked in turn 4. Lap 100 was the end of stage number 1. Stage 1 winner would be Brad Keselowski. Lap number 128, the 37 of Chris Busch wrecked in turn 4. Lap 162, the 11 of Denny Hamlin wrecked in turn 2. Lap 190, the 47 of Ryan Priest uh, went around in turn 1. Stage 2 concluded at lap number 200. Brad Keselowski also won that stage. Then after the moment of silence, the NASCAR plan between stages 2 and 3. We got back to racing. And went a few laps before the next caution, lap 252. The only caution in stage 3 would be for the 52 of Bailey Curry uh, getting together with Martin Truex in turn 2. Stage 3 ended at lap 300 with Martin Truex taking the stage victory. Final stage, we had four cautions in stage number 4, lap 310. The one of Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch got together on the front stretch. Lap 317, multi-car wreck, turn 2, Austin Dillon, Ty Dillon, Clint Boyer, Kyle Larson, and Ryan Priest. Lap 361, Denny Hamlin spun in turn 2, and final caution of the night, lap 392, the 2 of Brad Keselowski spun in turn 4. Lots of leaders in this race. Leading the most laps is Martin Truex Jr., 116 laps, led by the driver of the 19 car. 79 laps went to Kyle Busch, 76 laps went to Brad Keselowski. 43 laps led by Chase Elliott, 31 went to William Byron, 21 laps led by Denny Hamlin, 14 laps went to Kevin Harvick, uh, 7 laps excuse me, eight laps went to Alex Bowman, seven laps led by Daniel Hemrick, three laps went to David Reagan, and two laps were led by Ryan Blaney. All right, so on to your results for the night. Brad Keselowski won the first two stages. Martin Truex won the third stage. Did he finish it out and win stage four and the race? Yes, he did. Martin Truex Jr. picks up Win number three for 2019 in his patriotic Bass Pro Shops uh, Toyota. Very good looking car and uh, good to see Martin be able to take that to victory lane. Had a very uh, dominant car, especially as we got later into the night. I think he definitely had the best car set up for the night. Although, um, that has been the case as far as I can remember, is the track always changes in this race very drastically day to night. And I did hear a few drivers after the race say it didn't really change in this race once we got into the nighttime, so not really sure uh, what the deal with that is and why it didn't change, because that always seems to be a characteristic of this race. If your car's set up for the beginning of the race, probably not going to be around at the end of the race. But Martin Truex is one of the few guys that has been able to make that work if we remember back to 2016 he led all but eight laps in that coke 600 on his way to victory so he had a fast car from beginning to end that year joey logano came home in the second position kyle kyle bush third chase elliott in fourth and ricky stenhouse with a strong top five finish rest of your top 10 good run for chris busher in sixth alex bowman another top 10 in seventh jimmy johnson found his way into the top 10 this week in eighth William Byron puts all four Hendrick cars in the top 10 with a ninth place finish. 
and Kevin Harvick rounds out the top 10. 11 through 20th, great run for Corey LaJoy here in the 12th position. Fantastic run out of that 32 team on Sunday night. Uh, Denny Hamlin down here, He we talked about his couple of incidents, 17th on night for Denny Hamlin. Brad Keselowski had that late spin, ends up two laps down in 19th. 21st through 30th, two laps down in 21st is Daniel Hemrick. Clint Boyer, after all of his incidents, three laps down in 24th. Bubba Wallace landed in 25th. Kurt Busch, after all the incidents he was involved in, four laps down in 27th. Final page, 31st through 40th. Ryan Priest had a very off night. Ended up finally behind the wall, 57 laps down with suspension issues, and 31st on the night for that 47 car. Kyle Larson, after his accident, landed 33rd. Austin Dillon, 34th. Ross Chastain down here in the 36th position. And then early wrecks for Matt DiBenedetto and Eric Jones, 39th and 40th. All right, so that's your results from the Coca-Cola 600s. So let's head over to the media center. We'll see what Martin and his team had to say after this victory. Or Wednesday? I'm trying to think what happened Wednesday. Uh, oh, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day, Joe. Obviously, obviously, I'm excited about tonight. <laughs> now, for me personally, obviously, the Hall of Fame is such a huge deal. Everybody, this is a good example of how I get pushed out front and get a chance to be in the Hall of Fame when it, you got race teams like this, crew chiefs like this, and drivers, and everybody. It was a great effort tonight by everybody. Our pit crew, I think Cole will talk about everything, but it's just a thrill for me to be a part of it. I'm thrilled to be going in the Hall of Fame, and it's just a, a great time for us. I think about, you know, how much God's blessed me, and. How much I miss JD. Got Coy here with me, and for our family and everything, it's just a huge deal for us and the racing family at Joe Gibbs. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess it looks doable now, but you know, at the time, it was, uh, yeah, not good. We, uh, you know, we sustained quite a bit of damage there, and and uh, you know, we're really fortunate enough that we blew the tire we did, and you know, 20 feet earlier in the corner, we would have knocked the fence down and probably would have been out of the race. So. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, we just felt really fortunate to still be in the race at that point. And then, uh, you know, really had to had to work on it a lot. Um, it wasn't uh, wasn't very good. You know, from from being as good as it was until when we blew the tire to uh, to afterwards, we uh, I don't think we've had to make as many adjustments as we had to make on it. Um, that car tonight was uh, it was crazy. Um, and then we finally finally got on the other side of it and then we're able to kind of keep up with it the rest of the night but uh you know looking at it in victory lane after the race i mean it looked like we uh, got done racing at martinsville so you know as much time as we spend you know tuning the bodies on these things and, and getting them married and dynamically perfect it was uh it was crazy to see the car uh, be that good um and be that banged up well it was a it was definitely a tough race um you know it was a heck of a battle you know, I thought early on in the race we uh, we were really strong, obviously, and felt like running away with that first stage. And you know, 75 laps in or something like that, I, I, we were kind of checking out, and then just blew right front tire out of nowhere and hit the fence. And thought, oh man, this, you know, felt like our race was going to be over at that point. You know, I hit the wall pretty good and had a lot of damage and had tire rubs and all that, and just uh, <clears throat> you know, never gave up on it. Kept working and kept fighting and. You know, by like lap 250 or so, we got it. We got it dialed back in to where it was pretty good and uh, pretty amazing, really. I mean, you know, to see the car after the race, it looks like we raced the damn thing in Martinsville. So, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm just kind of amazed. I'm kind of speechless. But uh, you know, thanks to my team, they did a great job. We uh, we just never gave up on it, and we kept working and kept tweaking. And you know, the last uh, you know. 100, 150 laps. It was, it was really good. So just thankful for all of them for the hard work. And uh, we got a we got an awesome race team. And you know now that we uh, we got some momentum here and a little confidence on a mile and a half. That's uh, that's a you know really good sign for us moving forward. So just uh, overall a really good week for us. And uh, you know I felt good going into the race. And it's nice to you know kind of back that up. So feels good and uh, pretty awesome weekend to win. All right, so let's take a look at your playoff grid following the Coke 600 before wrapping up here tonight. Obviously, Truex moving into the three-win category now, along with Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. Denny Hamlin still sits there with two wins and then one win apiece for Joey Logano and Chase Elliott 
all your drivers currently locked into the playoffs. In terms of drivers in on points, we did have a bit of moving this week. Ryan Blaney up one spot to ninth. Alex Bowman jumped two. He's now in the top ten on the back of all of his strong runs he has had recently. Down two is Clint Boyer to 11th. Eric Almarola dropped one to 12th. Jimmy Johnson jumped a couple spots with his top 10 finish to 14th. Biggest mover of the week, though, is William Byron up four spots to the 15th position. Kyle Larson dropped one down to 16th. Eric Jones dropped three with his last place finish. He is now out of a playoff position in 17th. Ryan Newman also dropped one to 18th. Ricky Stenhouse up a couple. He's back up to 19th now. So... Lots of moving this week in the playoff grid, in and around the playoff grid. Even some moving just outside of it. So definitely, uh, definitely some some real bit of drama starting to shape up here with the playoff grid. Only two points separates the cutoff line now. Kyle Larson only two points above Eric Jones. So definitely nothing is set in stone here. At least not like what we have in in the Xfinity series. Um, that is definitely, I think. A definite 12 driver playoff right there, uh, but this one you, you've definitely got some guys that could that could move in or out at any moment depending on how luck falls their way. So um, it'll be fun to watch this going forward as it usually is to see who makes the playoffs and who doesn't. I mean we're now halfway through the regular season, so that was race number 13. Uh, we got 13 left in the regular season, so uh, we're definitely getting to that point where. The playoff grid is really starting to take shape, and we've really got to start looking at who's going to make the playoffs and who is not going to make the playoffs. I think we're going to have still one or two more surprises sneak in here off of wins that we're not expecting, but uh, for the most part, I think a lot of these guys uh, are definitely going to be in the playoffs, even if they don't get a win between now and Indy. But that is your playoff grid following the Coca-Cola 600, and I believe that'll do it for us on this week's Cup Rewind. Uh, we did have a, an ARCA Rewind and an Xfinity Rewind go up yesterday, so if you haven't seen those, go check those out. Pole position coming up tonight. Um, it will be late. Uh, I will say that uh, it will not be at 8 p.m., but uh, it will be should be up tonight. Uh, probably be very late tonight. So uh, keep an eye out for that uh, to get you recapped on everything that happened this weekend a huge weekend i really uh, memorial day weekend the biggest weekend of racing period between the coke 600 the indy 500 the the monaco grand prix everything that goes on so we'll have all that covered for you on pole position uh whenever that does finally get up tonight and then uh, diecast review as usual coming up on wednesday then we'll be at uh, pocono on friday with the arca menard series so uh, lots to look forward to this week, so if you haven't done it already, you need to go down below, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from r and While you're down there, why don't you hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. So with that, this has been the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.